Avoid these 25 common mistakes in Photoshop, part 2. Welcome to this video where we continue with our list of common errors or mistakes people make in Photoshop. Number 13 on my list is not renaming and grouping layers. This happens to everybody at some point. You're in a frenzy, you create layer after layer, but you forget to rename them. If you take a few hours off and then you come back to your project, you'll understand how frustrating it is to have a layers panel that doesn't help you. My advice is constantly to rename them after you've created three or four layers. Then always group them into folders if they go together in the project. 14. Not checking the color mode when creating a new document. Always use RGB and 8-bit when you're starting a new project. CMYK is used when you want to print something and anything over 8 bits will not give you better quality for your on-screen graphics. 15. Using large thumbnails in the layers panel. This space is precious. This is why professional designers rely a lot on folders to get more space. If you're setting your thumbnails to the large format, you might get a better understanding of your layer, but you must scroll 10 times more to find something. My advice is to right-click the thumbnail and choose small. 16. Working with one hand. This is a critical mistake. I've seen several designers work with one hand during a job interview for my company. When I politely addressed the issue, I got responses similar to, that's how I'm comfortable. That justifies nothing. You'll be slower without question. So please always use both hands when working in Photoshop. 17. Not using autosave set at 5 minutes. By default, Photoshop has its autosave feature set at 10 minutes. The difference may not sound like a lot of time, but in 5 minutes you can sketch out some important ideas that you'd lose if your computer dies or you have a power outage. To set your autosave at 5 minutes, open your preferences and go to File Handling. Here you have to choose 5 minutes from this drop down. This will save you a lot of shouting in case the worst happens. Number 18. Working too zoomed in. We already spoke about this issue, but it's one of the most common errors I see designers make. If you're working 20 to 30 times at 200%, your designer eye gets distorted and you make decisions that don't follow the project's normal proportions. That's why so many designers use large fonts and huge buttons. They're either too zoomed in or too zoomed out. My advice is to use Control 1 regularly. 19 using Photoshop to design logos. While this can be done, it's not the ideal program, Illustrator is a far better option because it creates vectors you can scale infinitely. This means you can design your logo in Illustrator at 200 by 200 pixels and then blow it up to 200 by 200 inches without losing quality. 20. Distorting images. Beginners make the following mistake. They take a small image and then enlarge it substantially. This makes the photo blurry or pixelated. If you're using Photoshop CC, you'll see the program now does a far better job than CS6, but it's still not a great idea to increase your image size significantly. Some designers forget to add shift in the mix when they use Control T. This translates into layers that look like this. I'm exaggerating here, but I hope you see my point. 21 not using guides. This is a fantastic feature in Photoshop because it allows you to align your layers precisely on the canvas. Guides are one pixel horizontal and vertical lines you can add to your canvas. To add them, you must first press Ctrl R. This reveals your rulers on the left and top sides. Now, if you click and drag from these areas, you'll get a guide. To move it, just be on the Move tool and hover over it. Your cursor will transform and this means you can change its position. Don't want it anymore? Simply drag it off the screen. And if you want to temporarily disable it, just use Control semicolon. The alternative is to go to View, Show, Guides. From here you can toggle their visibility. My advice is always to use them, but also lock them into place so you don't move them by mistake. You can do that with Control, Alt, semicolon. Now, even though I'm hovering over it, I can't move it. Use the same hotkey again or go to View, Lock Guides to regain control. Mistake number 22. Not using the alignment tools. 
We'll have a separate video about these tools, but it's a big warning sign when you see a designer eyeballing layers that should be aligned precisely. Always strive for precision in Photoshop. The program has tons of features to help you do that. So instead of fiddling around like this to sort these layers, why not use this one-click solution from up top? 23. Not knowing the difference between opacity and fill. These two controls are at the top of your layers panel. Most designers know that if you lower the opacity, the layer becomes transparent. If you set it at 0%, it becomes invisible. But what about fill? Initially, you might think it does the same thing, but why would Adobe do that? The difference is this. Fill doesn't affect your layer styles. Let me show you what I mean. Here I have an object that features a stroke. If I lower the opacity, the entire thing becomes transparent. Let me go back to 100%. Now, if I lower the fill, notice the layer becomes translucent, but the stroke remains untouched. That's the big difference between the two. 24. Not knowing Photoshop works with vectors too. Yes, Illustrator is a much better option if you want to work with a lot of vectors, but Photoshop can create vectors too. You can do that with any of these tools. These are shapes and they can be infinitely scaled without losing quality. You can also create vector shapes with the help of the pen tool. Just have it set to shape from the top left. We'll talk more about it in a separate video. The final sub-optimal choice is number 25, using a version of Photoshop that's older than CS4. This version was launched in 2008. I know there are some users who still like Windows XP and Media Player, but the sheer amount of improvements and features added to these versions of the program are immense. If you spent a fortune on the program, I can understand your reasoning, but CS6 should be your lowest Photoshop version. Plus, the Creative Cloud offers Photoshop for as low as $19 per month. That's 100% worth it. OK, that's my list of 25 mistakes, errors and misconceptions about Photoshop. I hope these bits of information will help you develop efficient habits that will improve your workflow.